Greetings in Christ. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and kindle in us the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit, and we shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Okay, before you unsubscribe, thinking that I'm some kind of a lunatic, I wanted to explain why I'm dressed the way I am. If you're familiar with the Holy Bible, most likely you already know that I'm wearing sackcloth. Sackcloth is a type of fabric usually made of goat's hair or horse's hair. St. John the Baptist, this is what he would have worn in the desert, along with a leather belt. I choose a rope belt myself. Um, why am I wearing this? What's the point? I hope that after you watch this video, you will understand why. Um, first of all, I don't normally do this. I'm doing this mainly for demonstration purposes only, so you can see how the early prophets and the saints would have done penance and repented for the Lord. We're missing a lot of the passion and a lot of the, the level of commitment that the early Christians had, and I really would encourage Christians to bring this back. I think that one of the blessings of Vatican II is that it was a hard, cold look back at the early church, pre-Reformation, um, pre-Middle Ages, and it was a hard look at how they worshipped, how they did things. I, I know that there were a lot of uh, problems that followed Vatican II, but I honestly think that based on the documents themselves, that it was just an honest effort to bring the church back to its simple apostolic uh, practices like reading from the Old Testament in the Holy Mass. Um, but that's for another video. Anyway, this is how the prophets would have dressed and what they would have done in times of mourning and penance. Why did they do this? Well, first of all, it's very uncomfortable to wear this. That When you wear this, you are reduced to being a nothing, a beggar. You're nothing but a caveman. Uh, you're reduced to being nothing but an animal when you wear this. It's a very uncomfortable fabric, it's very itchy, the, the threads uh, really poke into your skin. It, if you can imagine wearing a very thick wool sweater, it's like three times as bad. So if you ever happen to come across a grocery store that uh, has big sackcloths of, um, big sacks of potatoes, see if you can't grab one, uh, get as big of a one as you can, and stitch it together to make a robe. Um, and I tend to do this on Fridays, especially during Lent, uh, when I pray the Liturgy of the Hours. And I must say, it really reduces me to the most basic elements. It really humbles me before the Lord. And um, again, this is something I do privately. Um, I would never take this to the streets. Um, I'm doing this publicly mainly just as a demonstration. Um, but this is a biblical and traditional practice uh, that the early church and the saints throughout the, throughout the ages would have done. Um, but what do you do after you put it on? That's the big question, right? Well, this is sackcloth, and then we have ashes. So, uh, people like John the Baptist, people like um, Isaiah or Ezekiel, or any of the early prophets who fasted in sackcloth and ashes, Joel, uh, Psalm 30 verse 11 mentions God removing the sackcloth and returning his joy of his mourning into dancing. So this is what we would have worn in ancient times when we were mourning over our sins, over a national disaster. Uh, you have to remember in ancient times it wasn't uncommon for invading armies to come in and really mess things up. And of course people were upset about it and would blame themselves and it was usually the result of their sins anyway. So, uh, this is what they would have worn, okay? And even today, in some parts of Africa and in some parts of the world, you can still see people wearing sackcloth and ashes, okay? So, again, I'm not saying that this is something I do. Uh, occasionally, I'll try just to remind myself uh, how my, my spiritual ancestors did it. Um, I think that one thing we're seriously lacking in the modern church is this hardcore, this raw spirituality that doesn't mind discomfort, that doesn't mind to really sacrifice oneself for God. Again, it's not that God requires this of us. It's that when we do this, we use our bodily senses, like our sense of touch, to remind ourselves that life is, life is a struggle. 
and uh, only God can give us peace. So I hope, I hope I've encouraged you and not uh, scared you off with this. Um, but again, I'm doing this mainly just to demonstrate how it would have been done. All right? So sackcloth and ashes, and then normally the ashes would be, uh, it could be uh, ashes from a fire, and they would just uh, um, pick up the ashes and, uh, and, and, and throw it onto themselves, or uh, cast it onto themselves, or rub it over their heads, to remind themselves not only that they are reduced to ashes, that they, but that we as human beings are nothing but dust and ashes, that we, we die and we decompose and we, come, we become part of the earth again. Um, that, and all it takes is an incinerator to reduce us to ashes. So it really helps remove all pride and all self-centeredness. So I'm doing kind of a, 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 a scaled down version of how it would have been done. I have a little incense burner with ashes in it. I've already traced a cross on my head, uh, just like on Ash Wednesday. But normally they would have picked up uh, big clumps of ashes and kneeled and they would have been praying the Psalms, usually the, uh, the penitential Psalms like Psalm 51 and uh, of course in Hebrew most likely or Aramaic or uh, Greek when you get into the, uh, the time of Christ. Um, so <clears throat> in, 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 uh, in the Catholic Church it would have been done in Latin and if there are some people today still doing it they might do it in the vernacular. Anyway, enough academics, this is how it would have been done. They would have been saying, Lord of mercy, Christ of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord make me clean, only you can make me clean, Lord have mercy, Lord have and so they would have repeatedly taken the ashes and rubbed it over their heads, over their faces, to really make contact with the earth, to really connect with their sins. And, uh, and it does make a difference. It really does make a difference to put yourself in their shoes and to do things as they would have. So I'll just pour the rest of this on here. I'm going to take a bath anyway. Uh, so. Have a good Lent, fast, pray, do penance. Doesn't mean you have to wear sackcloth and ashes. And it doesn't mean that I do this every day, but this is how they would have done it. So I think it says a lot about how far we've gone from our roots and how maybe we need to take a look back and learn from our ancestors. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Lord of mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Lord of mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Okay, so that was the demonstration of how people would have fasted in sackcloth and ashes. May God bless you and your families.